वेलकम टू सी ई सी गुरुकुल टुडे माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर कल्पना बाकुनी प्रिंसिपल कमला नेहरू कॉलेज आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द पार्ट टू ऑफ द लेक्चर ऑन इंटीरियर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द अर्थ इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैड डिस्कस्ड द इंटीरियर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द अर्थ इन द फिजिकल टर्म्स and we elaborated on the evidences to understand the interior structure of the earth and we talked about the density the pressure and temperature and one more very important indirect evidence to understand the internal structure of the earth that is the seismic evidences now in this part i am going to focus on the evidence of seismic waves and how do they tell about the interior structure of the earth so when we talk about the divisions of the earth's interior as i told you before that the structure of the earth it is divided into layers and these layers they are different from each other in physical terms and also chemical terms that means mostly when we talk about the physical difference we call the structure of the earth but when we talk about the chemical uh, differences then we talk about composition of the earth so the earth it has a solid layer called the crust and after the crust there is a highly viscous layer that is called the mantle then comes the core which has two parts the outer part that is in liquid that is a liquid layer that is the outer part of the core called the outer core and after that the solid center that is called the inner core so as we understand that the earth and the, its interior it is divided into different layers we had also elaborated on these layers but i am just going to um, repeat a few points here that when we talk about the interior structure and the layers there are different boundaries between these layers and these are the boundaries you know they which separate the crust mantle and core from each other now how do we reach this uh, understanding that they are they are different from each other for this we understand that the uh, the evidence of seismology or when we talk about the seismic waves the earthquake waves how much time do they take to travel from one layer to another or how their vibrations undergo changes through the interior based on these inferences we understand the different layers the layering and boundaries as we understand that they can be supported with the seismic evidences when we talk about what are seismic waves in very simple words an earthquake is a natural event which means shaking of the earth and in the event of earthquake when the energy is released and the waves are generated they travel or they are transmitted in all directions now these uh, seismic waves you know they are basically of two types those waves which pass through the body of the earth or the interior of the earth they are called body waves and these body waves are generated due to the release of energy at the focus focus that means it is the point from which these waves or you know the seismic waves are generated and once they are released from the focus they move in all directions traveling through the body of the earth 
so besides the body waves there are other waves also which are called the surface waves in fact when the body waves interact with the surface rocks then a new set of waves is generated and they are called surface waves these waves as they are known as surface waves they move along the surface so coming to the point that what are these two body waves first type of waves is called the p waves and they are also known as primary waves primary because that is the first set of waves they are also known as longitudinal waves because they move in a to and fro manner that means they they move forward and then move backward and then again forward but their general movement is along the direction of the wave so they are also known by another name that is called compressional waves because in this kind of waves there is some kind of a stretching and squeezing of the material is involved so whether we call them primary waves longitudinal waves or compressional waves they are essentially the first set of waves which are released after the incidence of the earthquake then comes the surface waves as i said that when the body waves interact with the surface rock then they generated uh, the surface waves while talking about the characteristics of the p waves the p waves move faster and they are the first set to arrive at the surface when i said longitudinal type of movement that means the p waves as they move to in a to and fro motion but they vibrate parallel to the direction of the wave one very important thing to understand about the p wave is that they travel through all kind of mediums that is whether they are gaseous liquid or solid materials in the earth's interior the p wave can pass through any of them coming to the s waves they arrive at the surface with some time of Uh, some kind of time lag and therefore they are called secondary waves they are also known as distortional waves or transverse waves s wave when we talk about the characteristics of uh, s waves they are very different from primary waves because unlike primary waves which move in a longitudinal manner in a to and fro motion the s waves move in a perpendicular motion to the wave direction that means it is it makes a kind of a transverse motion and in this movement they um, they normally you know they are distortional type of waves i can explain you with one example that suppose if you hold the Uh, the skipping rope uh, with one hand and start moving it in a circular motion you would see that the movement or the vibration of uh, the the wave it it goes you know in this kind of a motion it it moves like this and that means on the plane of the wave movement it it is actually making a perpendicular uh direction so s waves can travel only through solid materials and they cannot pass through the liquid materials this is a very important evidence which would explain us you know a different type of layers and their further uh, divisions later so as i said that s waves they can pass through only solid materials that means they do not get the entry through the liquid or gas materials or mediums 
Now, S waves, they have high frequency, they have short wavelength and from the focus, they propagate in all the directions. The surface waves, you know, they move along the surface of the earth, that means at the outermost part of the earth, they have low frequency but long wavelength and they are confined to the uppermost part of the earth's crust. They can be called, you know, the most damaging and disastrous kind of waves because the entire uh, you know habitation and the entire uh, uh, you know whatever world we have that is above the the earth surface and surface waves you know they directly affect all these structures and the life you know on the earth surface these surface waves they have greater strength around the epicenter that means the destruction is maximum around the epicenter, especially in the case of surface waves. They are also called long period waves because uh, they ta take longest time to uh, reach you know the seismograph and they cover the longest distance to be recorded. Besides that, we say that the surface waves they are you know they diminish or they reduce with the depth and at a smaller depth only they die out. That is why their impact is confined more on the, on the uh, surface and as I said before that because of that fact they are responsible for most of the destruction in the human world. So when we talk about the surface waves after talking about the surface waves, after talking about the P waves, after talking, uh, talking about the S waves, let me uh, say a few words you know on the general characteristics of seismic waves. The seismic velocities they depend on the material properties. That means that when the seismic waves they move their speed, velocity, depends on the material properties through which they are passing. Here I think the one very important thing is the density because as in the last lecture we discussed that density increases as we go deeper in the earth or towards the center of the earth. Therefore, the seismic waves they travel more quickly through denser materials and generally they travel more quickly with depth for the simple reason that the density increases with depth and as I said that as the density increases their speed also increases. So seismic waves they travel at a higher velocity at a greater speed through the denser material and Obviously, because the density increases with the depth of the earth, therefore, deeper the uh, seismic waves go, higher the velocity they assume. Then when we talk about another property like temperature, there is also a relationship, you know, between the velocity of the earthquake, uh, rather I would say the velocity of the seismic waves and the temperature. In those areas which are hot areas, they slow down seismic waves, whereas the cold areas, the velocity of seismic wave increases. Now coming to the uh, yet another property that is pressure, here also uh, as the pressure increases, you would see that seismic wave also, you know, they also assume higher velocity. So there is yet another characteristic which is associated with the seismic waves that they move slowly through a soft and liquid medium and they uh, move you know at a greater speed 
through a rigid and solid medium. Putting it other way around, if they slow down, that means the medium has either become softer or it is not solid. So, these are the some of the characteristics. Considering these characteristics, as we understand that when we uh, in this diagram, as you can see, that these earthquake waves, you know, the seismic waves, they do not take a straight line when they travel through the earth. Why? Because the earth is not a homogeneous body. Had it been a homogeneous body, the seismic waves would have been, uh, you know, straight line in their movement. So, the seismic waves, they do not follow straight path, rather they follow curved path. The reason of following the curved path is because as we uh, go in the interior of the earth, the change in their densities, you know, the change in the densities of rocks, that creates a kind of, uh, you know, factor that is called refraction. And when we talk about refraction, that means the refraction makes the waves to change their paths in different directions. You must be understanding that there are two things, one is called reflection and the other thing is called refraction. In reflection, the waves, they tend to rebound in the same angle in, uh, in which they are moving. Whereas, in refraction, you know, the waves change their paths in different directions. Uh, the seismic waves refract at the interface of different densities of composition of the earth and therefore, they follow a curved path. This refraction, you know, at, at the interface of different densities, this is very, very important to understand. Now, the fact of curved path, as I said that it is due to refraction, it leads to yet another phenomenon that is called the earthquake shadow zone. The earthquake sh shadow zone is a zone where no seismic waves are reported or they are detectable. These shadow zones are there in respect to a particular focus. So, in that sense, each focus of earthquake makes its own shadow zone. The P waves and S waves, they have their own shadow zones and there are different implications associated with them due to their own characteristics. Here when we see this diagram, the shadow zone of P and S seismic waves are shown here. The gray area where you know uh, it is something like from 103 to 142 degree um, location, we can see that there is no earthquake wave or seismic wave is reported. The wave, the P wave and S waves both are shown in this diagram. In the next diagram, I can explain them separately. Like uh, P wave, you know, when we talk about the shadow zone of P wave, it occurs in the area between 103 degree and 142 degrees from an earthquake focus. Let me explain it to you that suppose if there is a focus from where the, the seismic waves, you know, they are released and 
if it is primary wave then it would continue to uh, you know pass through till 103 but there would be a gap between 103 to 142 degree on the other side of that focus or uh, you know there would be no seismic wave would be recorded there. Now this uh, fact is very important and moreover these P waves you know when we talk about the earth the P wave shadow zone they have very important inference in this uh, case that the P waves encounter a sudden variation in density at the interface of mantle and the core. Now as we understand from our earlier discourse that the densities vary in different layers of the interior of the earth and there are striking differences in densities especially when we talk about the crust, the mantle and the core. When these P waves they encounter a sudden variation in density at the interface of mantle, they mantle and core they refract and after that as they travel through the core they refract once again while coming out of the core. So at two point this refraction happens at one point while entering the core and the other point while coming out of the core and at both the points because of the sudden change in the density they tend to refract or rather I would say that in this uh, sense there is a deflection of these P waves inside the core. Now due to such refractions at the boundary of core there is a gap between 103 degree and 142 degrees which results into a shadow zone and it helps in understanding the measurement or the extent of the core. P waves pass through the core of the earth as they can travel through any substance whether it is solid, liquid or gas. So we were talking about the P waves which slow down as they enter the core and speed up again in the inner part. Now this is very important fact because as we understand that these waves slow down when they come across a change in the medium and when the medium is liquid or not solid. So the inference of slowing down of P wave indicates that there is some kind of liquid medium which is in the outer core. But what about the fact that speed up again in the inner part that means the inner core is in a solid state. So these are two divisions of core the outer core and the inner core. The outer core as I said that it is since we have just said that the P waves slow down as they enter the core that means the outer core is not solid and as I said that they speed up again that means the inner core is solid. So we can understand that there is a direct relationship between the change in the nature of the medium whether it is liquid or solid and the velocity of the seismic wave. Now this is the diagram where you can see it is a comparative shadow zones of P and S waves. Let me explain it to you in different cases. Uh, you can just focus on the uh, first diagram in which the primary waves or the P waves are illustrated. The from the focus the P waves they are moving in all directions 
and as you see wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and here you see that as the uh, seventh wave or sixth wave it intersects or it reaches the uh, boundary of the core it is turning inward it is turning within the core with a refraction I had explained it to you before that this deflection in the angle or refraction occurs because of the sudden change in the density as we understand that at the boundary of the core the density suddenly changes therefore the p waves they refract they are bent uh, towards the inside of the core and once again you can see that as they pass through the core and they are about to emerge from the core they coming out of the core again they deflect again they refract changing their angle now if you see in a sequence wave number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now it refracted there was a deflection which took it inside the core but the in continuity the next wave has also it has uh, it has also deflected but there is a difference in the gray area the, the the area which is indicated with gray color that becomes the shadow zone so this gap indicates that there is no p wave reported in this particular zone known as the shadow zone of p wave the extent of this shadow zone of p waves it is from 103 to 142 degree in some of the references it is also given as 143 degree after that again the p waves can be seen they are received so till 103 the p waves are there between 103 and 142 degree they are not there that is the shadow zone and again beyond 142 degree they are again reported so this is the case of the shadow zone of p waves coming to the next diagram that is the diagram of s waves now there is a clear difference between the two diagrams and you can see that here also from the focus you can see the epicenter of the uh, the wave there that earthquake and from there the s waves you know they are released and in continuity they are passing through the mantle but as they encounter the boundary of core suddenly they disappear they do not get an entry into the core what could be the reason for that the reason is the characteristic of s waves that they cannot pass through liquids and this is inferred that at this point where they are stopped or they uh, you know they do not get the entry that means it is in a liquid state now when we talk about you know this um, liquid state at the at the uh, beginning of the core as I have already explained to you that that is the outer core so coming to the s waves shadow zone we can say that s waves they simply do not enter through the core and this suggests that the outer core is not in solid state as the s waves cannot transmit through the liquid now coming back to this diagram again you can see the gray zone that gray color 
area you know which had indicated the shadow zone of primary waves that was only between 103 degree to 142 degree but if you compare it with the shadow zone of s waves it is much bigger it is much wider why because it has not entered the core that means before that only at 103 degree only their transmission has stopped and they cannot go beyond that that leaves aside a much bigger shadow zone which we can say that which is uh, you know this zone between 103 degree and 142 degree that can be identified you know as the shadow zone for both the types of waves whereas when we talk about beyond 103 degree there is no s wave therefore as we had seen before in the diagram the shadow zone of s wave is much larger than that of the p waves it is almost halfway around the earth opposite any earthquakes focus so from shadow zone of seismic waves it is calculated that the boundary of core occurs at 2900 kilometer below the surface if you recall in the earlier lecture when we were talking about the extents of these layers called the crust the mantle and the core the core begins at the depth of 2900 kilometer which is based on the inference of these shadow zones so when today when we are talking about the significance the relevance of the seismic waves you know or or i can say that when we talk about this uh, evidences of seismic waves to tell us about the interior structure of the earth it is very important you know that on the basis of their travel their changes etc we can understand the boundaries within the earth now uh, we can say that after we have already discussed the shadow zones of primary waves secondary waves there are some discontinuities also which are called seismic discontinuities this is also a very important factor when we discuss the evidence of seismic waves on the basis of the seismic evidences we have you know two such discontinuities and what are these discontinuities basically these are the interfaces you know where there is a marked difference in the properties that means whenever there is some kind of a sharp uh, demarcation between you know the properties then it emerges as a discontinuity or it is known as the discontinuity here it is we are talking about seismic discontinuities so in seismic discontinuities there is one very well known discontinuity called moho discontinuity and this discontinuity separates the crust from mantle and why i am saying that this discontinuity is important between you know the crust and the mantle because the properties of crust you know uh, when it comes in a sharp difference with the properties of mantle then this kind of discontinuity happens and after the name of the uh, the seismologist who had discovered it this is called moho discontinuity the average depth of moho discontinuity or m discontinuity is about 35 km so this is about seismic discontinuities and now coming to the other discontinuity that is called gutenberg discontinuity this separates the mantle from core so uh, if i may repeat the crust and mantle 
and core these are the three important layers the discontinuity which is called the moho discontinuity that is between the crust and the mantle and the second type of discontinuity which we are discussing right now gutenberg discontinuity that is the that happens between the mantle and core that is at a, at the depth of about 2900 km from where the core begins though there is yet another discontinuity at the depth of about 5000 km which indicates the the solid inner core so uh, here we have moho discontinuity then we have the gutenberg discontinuity and these discontinuities also contribute to the knowledge of the interior structure of the earth in the beginning of this lecture today i mentioned that we are discussing structure of the earth whenever we say structure we relate to the physical uh, sense the physical characteristics more but as now i am coming to the composition of earth this is more in the chemical sense because as we know that within the earth uh, uh, there are uh, you know the layers are there which are different from each other in physical as well as chemical sense so physically when they are different from each other or when the structure is uh, when, when the interior is discussed in uh, you know physical characteristics then it is called structure of the earth when the focus is more on the chemical um, you know characteristics then it is called composition of earth so coming to this part where we are talking about the composition of earth uh, the crust as we say that that is the outermost layer of earth you know and since uh, the moho discontinuity separates the crust from mantle and then this crust you know it represents it is so thin that it represents uh, less than 1% of the of the total earth's volume in this uh, layer that is the crust the p waves we have talked a lot about the primary waves today so p waves they travel through crust at a speed which is less than 6.2 kilometers per second and somewhere here i would mention that you know uh, structurally the in the crust there are two layers the continental crust which is you know say about 30 to 60 kilometers uh, extent and uh, the continental crust you know in the uh, chemical terms you know it is uh, it is called sial uh, which combines the silica and aluminum which is lighter than the layer below this so we have the uh, continental crust and we uh, then the other one is the oceanic crust the oceanic crust is known as sima again it is a combination of silica and magnesia so going back to the continental crust which is by and large under the continental parts and under the mountains you know that is continental crust uh, they are they they assume the thickest extent under the mountains and uh, that is that is about the continental crust but when we talk about the uh, the uh, you know the oceanic crust which is under the oceans it is much thinner and as i said before it is called sima which is a combination of silica and magnesia there is yet another uh, you know set of terms which is called the lithosphere and asthenosphere now there are certain coincidences you know in these terms and the uppermost layer of earth's crust is known as lithosphere i repeat that the uppermost layer of earth's crust is known as 
lithosphere and under lithosphere there is asthenosphere. Now the difference is that lithosphere which is by and large you know it is it is composed of sedimentary rocks it is lighter and the asthenos and that is not only lighter but it is also um, you know we can say that it is solid whereas the lithosphere uh, under the lithosphere the asthenosphere is different from lithosphere in the sense that it is like in a molten state it is not in a solid state I would say it is like a plastic like state that is called asthenosphere. Now, these terms of lithosphere and asthenosphere they will be very relevant in our next lecture when we would discuss plate tectonics because when we talk about plates, plates are basically the parts of lithosphere they are called lithospheric plates and they glide over asthenosphere. So, here we are talking about the uppermost layer that is uh, of that is called the lithosphere and under that is the asthenosphere. Now, the upper section of the crust it by and large or I can say predominantly it consists of sedimentary rocks. Below sedimentary rocks there is a layer of crystalline rocks like granite, gneiss. So, in that also in the upper section there is majority of granite whereas in the lower section there are basaltic rocks. So, what kind of rocks are there that relate to the composition? So, sedimentary rocks and under that is the crystalline rock and in the crystalline rock there are granite, knees and uh, the, the next one is the basaltic rock. So, when we talk about this was all about crust when we come to the mantle in the terms of composition now as I am explaining to you the layer in between the, the base of crust the bottom of crust and the core that means where the crust ends and the core begins in between there is a huge layer uh, which is the the maximum uh, part of the earth that is called the mantle. Now, as we have already discussed the discontinuities before in terms of seismic waves, the mantle is separated from crust by moho discontinuity and mantle is separated by core uh, from core by Gutenberg discontinuity. So, I repeat that the uh, mantle is separated from crust by moho discontinuity and mantle is separated from core by Gutenberg discontinuity. This mantle is composed of dense and rigid rocks like olivine rocks and through the mantle if you see the densities increase, the temperatures increase, the pressures also increase. Therefore, through the mantle all the seismic waves they, they uh, you know speed up, they assume greater speed, their velocity increases. Now, the uh, mantle may also be divided into two parts, there is the upper mantle you know uh, and the lower mantle. The upper mantle put together with the lower section of crust is called the asthenosphere which we have already discussed before. So, asthenosphere is not only the part of the crust but it also involves the upper mantle which we have discussed before that it is partially molten plastic like substance. Then the lower mantle that is called the mesosphere 
and this mesosphere is solid. So, the upper mantle along with the lower section of crust it is partially molten whereas, the lower mantle is solid which is called the mesosphere. Now, the velocity of seismic waves you know it decreases in the asthenosphere therefore, it is referred as low velocity zone. In this low velocity zone the velocities of both P and S waves increase till approximately 100 kilometer and then suddenly in this low velocity zone suddenly they slow down increasingly till approximately they reach 200 kilometers. So, in between approximately 100 kilometers to approximately 200 kilometers there is this low velocity zone where the, uh, the seismic waves uh, velocity decreases. Thereafter again they pick up and till they reach 2900 kilometers as you understand that is the beginning of core the velocities of both P and S waves increase and what happens after 2900 kilometers the S waves disappear because they do not go beyond that because there is there is no solid uh, layer or substance there that is liquid substance P waves though they they enter the the uh, outer core but they slow down they slow down because of the characteristic in the beginning as we had discussed that the seismic waves slow down in the liquids now when we talk about the man the crust the mantle then the third part is the core and in the core the the center the central part of the earth you know you know that is called the core it starts with 2900 kilometers and it is composed of highly dense substance in the last lecture when we had elaborated the densities as the indirect ev evidence there we did discuss the highly dense substance in the core you know which in our uh, known world it it is something like it may be something like nickel and iron where the density is as high as 8. So, put together the uh, nickel and ferrous this zone or this layer is also called nephe. Now, the two layers within the core which have been identified they are the outer core and the inner core. The outer core and the inner core the outer core starts right after Gutenberg discontinuity and as we have already discussed that it the seismic evidence of the fact that S waves have disappeared they could not enter and the P waves entered, but they slowed down. So, that indicates that it is in liquid state the velocity of P waves decreases at the outer core from 13.7 kilometer to 8 kilometer per hour. So, despite the very high temperature in the core which is as much as you know the surface of the sun 6000 degree Celsius in the center of the earth it remains in solid state for the simple fact that even if it is so high in its temperature but, but because of the extreme pressure of the super incumbent load of the entire earth its melting point goes up so much that it remains in solid state despite high temperature. So, here we are we have discussed all the three parts of the interior structure uh, interior structure of the earth with special reference to seismic evidences and in the continuity in the next lecture 
we would be doing plate tectonics. Thank you so much.